afternoon to present one of God's incredible gifts. Partners of Marner Cirillo World Evangelism, join me in making welcome prophetess Juanita Bynum as she comes this afternoon in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Blessings. So good to see you. You look wonderful. There you go. You may be seated. We honor him and we bless God for him and his wife and what he has continued to contribute to the evolving of the presence of the Lord in the body of Christ. We thank you today for your timeliness in the spirit of God. It's important that we not only know God, but know his timing. And we honor God for that. And for all of the pulpit guests and the preachers and the teachers and the pastors and the people of God that are all over this building today, we honor God for you and for Robin and Christian Harfouche, who I am so, this is such a God moment for me because the very first time that I ever received a prophecy, a world prophecy over my life back in 1981, it was given to me by Robin and Christian Harfouche. I knew nothing about what they were prophesying and what he saw in the spirit. But I want to acknowledge today that the true and living God and the prophetic anointing that is on you and Robin's life is, it is um, undeniable and unquenchable and unstoppable. And just as, just as you see me stand here today, all that God has spoken in your spirit, it too shall come to pass. Somebody give God a praise. Praise him. There's a song that I play before I minister. And it's called From the Rising of the Sun to the Going Down of the Same. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. His presence is in this place. Yes, it says, Praise him. Oh, praise. Come on, here. Come on, what's his name, y'all?
Jump, shout, and pour you. Oh, come on, stand up on your feet and lift your hands up to it. Give God a praise out of your spirit. Come on, open up your mouth and give God a praise out of your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You may take your seats if you can. I want you to get your Bibles if you would. I'd like to kind of explain a little bit when I just took off of my shoes and put on my socks because the Lord began to deal with me some time ago, helping me to understand that it is important that wherever the soles of my feet shall trod, he will give us victory. He would give us victory in that same place at the same time, in that very moment. When the scripture said in the book of Isaiah, and I'm not going to, not going to linger here, I just want to make mention of this. When I saw last night getting off the plane, I saw the theme, or one of the themes that Dr. Cirillo had chosen from God. And Isaiah, the first chapter and the sixth verse said, from the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness or health in the nation's body, but wounds and bruises and fresh bleeding stripes they have not been pressed out and closed up or bound up or softened with oil no one has troubled to seek a remedy When I found that scripture, it, um, it ripped me in a place that I don't think that I have ever been torn before in prayer when the Lord began to say, what is the remedy for all that is happening in this world? Why would the Lord call us to this place? Is this just another time of gathering? Or is this something specific? Is this strategically what God is getting ready to shift us into? And so many times we can take something that is familiar to us and try to make it familiar about God when really God can use the same place but do something supernaturally different. Anybody in this place looking for something supernaturally 
different. I'm just trying to find the real people that I'm preaching to because, you know, conferences is like, is like when they went out uh, from Egypt. The Bible said a mixed multitude went. And so you got people that will come to a conference. But then you got people that understand that the reason why they're here, they have been called to a place of destiny. So I'm trying to find out who am I talking to because I certainly didn't come to preach to church people. I came to preach to spiritual people that want to know what is God saying and what is my next assignment and where is the power of God is about to fall because what we need is a remedy not just in the comforts and not just in our family and not just in our church and not just in our ministry but we need a remedy in the nation. Somebody say a remedy in the nation. Somebody said the nation needs a remedy. God, I feel you in this place. So in other words, I read a scripture last night when I got here. And the scripture said in the book of Corinthians that Christ is the power of God said Christ is the power of God Christ being the power now y'all gotta forgive me because I'm not I'm not gonna stay up here I'm, I'm, I, I gotta find some of my people that I know I know God is preaching to in this place and I don't and I don't want you to I don't want you to keep looking up on the screen like you're looking at a movie because in about another 20 minutes something is about to break in this building and so, and so, and so what I'm trying to do is help you warn your neighbor and warn everybody around you that I didn't just come to a conference. I'm looking for the deposit that God promised me. I fasted before I got here. I prayed before I got here. The enemy thought he would do everything he thought he could do to keep me from coming. But now that I am here, somebody said, now that I'm here, now that I'm here, somebody said, now that I'm here, Touch your neighbor and say, now that I'm here, I need space to bless him. Now that I'm here, I need room to give him glory. Now that I'm here, I need the room to tell him yes out of my spirit because my new yes is going to birth me into another place. Somebody say, into another place. Oh, Y'all sit down, into another place. Sit down for a second, into another place. Into another place. Woo! 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 Matter of fact, when I, when I go down the aisle, I don't want the security to follow me because this is a great place to die. Uh-huh. If somebody want to kill me, uh-huh, this is a great place to die. It's a great place to lose your life preaching the gospel. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Oh, Y'all, come over here, somebody. I just wish I had somebody to say something because guess what? The anointing of God that sits on the people of God that will preach in this conference after me, the mantle is sitting on them and they've got to be able to come near the people. I'm not kidding. The Bible said, and God wrought special miracles by the garments that Paul wore on his body. And the reason why I'm walking these aisles is because God is releasing something in the atmosphere. He's breaking something over your man over your heart he's free in your spirit somebody give him a shout right now sit down sit down sit down I don't want to I don't want to get too far sit down sit down don't play no music don't play no music because see when God called me to open up a ministry I had a praise team I had a worship team I had a band I had all of that and God told me he said that's what's wrong with the people he said you got it in the atmosphere but it ain't in their belly he said this is an hour now that we gotta stop all the cosmetics up and we gotta stop trying to make it grand up and we gotta make sure that when people are praising God they praising God because they have a relationship with him they're not praising him because of B flat they're not praising him because of a sharp they're praising him because they're saying when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all see yes let me let me help you with something sit down it's atmospheres like this that uh 
that helps us to determine the real people of God from the propped up fake people because the fake people still thinking about the atmosphere, thinking about the outfits and they position it. I'm a pastor and I'm a preacher and I'm an evangelist, but a real smart person would know that when you get in the atmosphere of a prophet like this, it's an atmosphere where God is dropping fresh matter and he ain't got time for you to be thinking about who you are. This is a time for you to lay down your title, lay down your crown and say, God, whatever you do in this place, do not pass me by do not pass me wait a minute y'all pushing me too fast sit down, sit down y'all pushing me too fast hold by Shia hold by Shia I ain't got but I'm going to do this in the next few minutes. So what am I, what am I, what am I, what am I trying to do? What is my job in the, in the summer zine? Whoa, that's God because it's bigger than the conference. Oh, I said, God said, it's a summons enough. I said, God said, if you in this building, it's because you are behind the schedule. And if you're going to meet the mark of where God has called you to be, you better open up your mouth and begin to give God a shout out of your belly because God wait a minute wait a minute wait wait sit down sit down why do I say that so then what is my assignment in the solemn assembly Ooh. In the great gathering at the summoning of the end time prophet, why am I here? Woo! Because, see, I understand something. This time around, it ain't about politics. This time around, you're not sitting on the stage because you're somebody. You're sitting on the stage because God got an assignment in you. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. And see, that's what he said to me. He said, the first thing we got to declare is how will we leave this place with power? How will we leave here with power? So he says, then you have to go back and research what the word power is and what was power given. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we say, every time somebody get up and sing, we tell me, that was powerful. We so shallow. We so shallow. Y'all got to forgive me because I ain't got nothing to lose by just saying the truth. We so, we so, we so shallow. You know, oh, that, 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 that song really blessed me. That's that, 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 yeah. That was, that, that was, that was so powerful. Oh, so-and-so, so-and-so so -and -so, uh, played the piano. That was so powerful. And when, when they danced, that was so powerful. And, 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 and when, when they preached, that was so powerful. When the scripture said, Lo, I've given unto you power to tread on the heads of serpents and scorpions. And so when he starts talking about, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, he's not talking about your physical aspect. He's talking about the purpose that he has placed on the inside of you. Nothing can hurt that that's the reason why when satan came to confront god about job he said handle whatever you want to handle in the natural but you can't touch the purpose that i have put in his life i'm not hearing y'all talk back to me and so what i'm saying to you is that if god has given us the power to tread on the heads of serpents and scorpions tread means to rip the brains and the plan of the serpent to pieces tread means to keep on stomping up unto whatever the devil thought he was going to do. You just wiped out his assignment. I'm not hearing y'all. And if you singing up and you're not treading up, you just singing a song up, but you're not treading up. I'm not hearing nobody talk. No, no, no. Unless you're preaching up, it's canceling out the plan of the enemy. 
you're not treading. You just. You just another preacher that can preach good, but you ain't got no power. I don't think, maybe I need to go to the back of this place. You ain't got no power because the devil ain't scared of you. You ain't got no power because hell don't even care if you wake up or not. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I wish I had somebody. But if you in this building and you said in 2009, I thought I was going to lose my mind and the gates of hell came against me. What I'm trying to tell you is you on schedule because you're the person that the devil is afraid of. You're the person that he don't want to ever praise God. You're the person that he didn't want you to get to this conference. Who am I preaching to? Wait, I just said something. Christian, I just said something. And the same thing happens everywhere the Lord leads me to go. When I start talking about people going through the fire, everybody start trying to act like you ain't that that ain't me. Cause I'm just wait, hold on, hold, hold, hold on. Hold on a minute. You ain't got no power unless you done had a cross experience. You can have on a nice suit and makeup and try to make us think that you ain't never went through nothing in your life. But I'm here to tell you, you have not yet hooked up with the relationship of Christ until you know something about suffering, until you know something about not being able to sleep at night, until you know something about don't know where your next time is coming from. I'm looking for the real people. Where are the real people? Where the real people where are the real people unless you know something about the more you pray it seems like God don't hear you who am I preaching to but you won't stop giving him the prize why not wait a minute why not why not give me give me five minutes I'm gonna tell you why not why not why not so why am I here? So what is the remedy? What is, what is the remedy? This thing hit me, Dr. Cirillo, about, about three weeks ago. He said to me, I want you to pick up the Bible and I want you to start reading in the Gospels. And so I started reading in the Gospels. How did I show you? And I came across the scripture and I kept running across scriptures that said, and he prayed for the man's eyes. And the Amplified Bible said, and they were instantly open. Woo. Woo. The woman had an issue of blood. And when she touched the hem of his garment, she was instantly. Give me my laptop for a minute. She was instantly made whole. I'm like, the man that was lame and couldn't walk when Jesus prayed for him he was instantly healed so I start seeing that word over and over and over again instantly 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 and I said God what are you trying to what are you trying to say he said what I'm trying to help you to understand is that sometimes when you preach a scripture and hear what I'm saying and the anointing out on your life have shifted you to another dimension. You can be reading the right scripture at the wrong time. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. And so the scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. But what the Lord is telling me is that there comes a time in your life, in your maturity in God, that you understand the character of who you are praying to. And you understand that in the realm of the spirit, there is no wait. I'm not hearing nobody. I'm not hearing nobody. I'm not hearing. There is a realm that you can tap in God. That when God speaking, you step over into the realm right then and there. I'm not giving y'all. And so I'm not praising God because I can see it. I'm praising God because my spirit got it. I'm not praising God because it's in my hand. I'm praising God because now it's in my spirit. Wait, 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 wait,
worried. I'm having some, I'm having some difficulties maybe in, 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 in helping you understand instantly. I looked up the word instantly. Why is the Lord saying instantly? Because Dr. Sorello said in his ad, we have, I didn't, I didn't, I took off the last part he said, and the Lord wouldn't let me leave the front part. We have no more time. Okay. We have no more time. I'm going to let that marinate for, for, for some of y'all. It's, it, it's marinating for the church people. It ain't got to marinate for the spiritual people. We have no more time, which means what God is saying. I need those that are spiritual to step as second Peter said, over in my divine nature. I want you to pick up my nature because my nature is a nature of instantly. If I speak it, it's already done. If I say it, it's already worked out. If I show it to you, you can go ahead and bless me because I'm not going to change my mind. the offense of God so God becomes offended when we say when Lord when he already said now God you're going to have to give me five people in here that's ready to grab this I said the Holy, the Bible said to offend, not the Holy Spirit. God gets offended when you keep asking him when, when he done brought you in the atmosphere today to reconfirm to you now. He said that's the reason why when I gave you the scripture about faith, I didn't say when faith is the substance of things hoped for. I said now. God, I wish I had somebody to start shouting now. Wait, wait, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Because what I gotta help you with, I gotta help you again with my assignment. I gotta help you with my assignment. I'm not a teacher. I'm a prophetic movement. Uh -huh. And so the foundation of the teacher word that would be laid down in this place all week long will hinge upon the deposit in the realm of the spirit. I came to give you your now. I came to give you your instantly. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I came to usher you into another dimension that whatever is being said from that pulpit, you are not talking about it's good to happen you saying it just happened to me right now I'm not somebody just start shouting now somebody start shouting now somebody start shouting now Can y'all sit down for two minutes and I'm gonna be finished. I'm gonna be finished. I gotta walk back here for a second. I'm gonna be finished. I'm gonna be finished. I want you to know that now is a spirit. Oh, shut up, I say. I want you to know that the word now is a spirit. Oh, she am the Messiah. And in order to embrace the word now, you got to look at God and not your situation. In order for you to embrace the word now, you got to know the magnificence of your God. You got to know how great he is. You got to know he ain't never failed. You got to know that he's the God of the impossible. You got to know he's the God that can do anything. He's still the miracle worker. He's still the mind regulator. He's still the healer. I said, everybody said, now! Oh, 
you might be sitting next to somebody uh, that's from your church, uh, but you better tell them today, uh, I gotta leave you for a second, uh, because if I don't praise them now, uh, I'm gonna miss the opportunity uh, to step over uh, into the power uh, of now. Uh, somebody give God a shout, now, 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 now. now. Not next week, not in an hour. been trying to do for the last 50 plus years and people are just now getting you all you've been trying to do for 50 plus years is to move the, the children of God out of Egypt to move them out of the religious principles and into the spiritual principles because a spiritual principle causes them not to ever have to wait. The spiritual principles cause them to speak those things which be not as though they were. And they come into existence under the power of now. So I got to make this I got to make now plain. So when I looked up the word, instantly, instantly, watch this. Don't move you. Everybody that's in that far, if you're on the screen and you can see me, everybody that's in the far back left, my left section, raise your hand. God said, give him a shout, because I just saw a tornado land back there. And there was some stuff that God said, y'all ain't got to pray about no more. And he said, oh, she I know by say, by 12 o'clock midnight, when you call back home, he said, it's already fixed. Y'all better shout back there like y'all done lost your mind. Because I know what I just said. No! Is it a whirlwind back there? Somebody help them praise God right now. Y'all too slow because, because you don't understand the whole, the whole depth of this meaning. So when I looked up the word, instantly, Dr. Sorello instantly said, instantly said, uh, in a minute, instantly said, all at once, instantly said, all of a sudden, without warning. Wait a minute, y'all didn't, didn't hear that. Instantly said, in a minute. <laughs> Prophet Hafush, I, I, I just need you to get this one if they don't. He said, instantly means in a minute. And I said, God, what are you talking about in a minute? He said, it means that when I speak something, they got 60 seconds to decide that they can never come uh, into what I just prophesied. I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. I'm not giving nobody say nothing. I said tonight, uh, you got 60 seconds. Uh, seat for a second because I'm gonna make it plainer than that I'm gonna make it plainer than that it said in a minute now I want the camera crew to take a picture 
of my table. Take a picture, the video camera, so it can be on the screen, so people can see what I'm saying. First of all, who am I preaching to right now? Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? Because see, you got to understand that the enemy is moving in the earth realm so fast that in order for God to do what he needs to do, he has to instantly snatch your mind out of the dimension of the earth realm. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. See, I've, I've been taking, I'm getting ready for a music tour and I've been taking dance lessons. And so when they got to the part where they wanted to teach me how to spin, they was teaching me how to spin. And I kept trying to spin. And every time I would spin, I would fall over. And I kept trying to do it again. And just a nickels, I would kept falling over. And the dance instructor stopped me and said, I know what your problem is. She said, because if you go spin around 360 degrees, your head got to go there first and when your head go the rest of your body will follow up and it'll keep you in balance and that's when God said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me and God said tell the people when you get to Florida that when you count to three throw your head to the right because in the spirit it's going to represent that when you throw your head up everything about your life up is getting ready to line up with what God is saying one two three throw it give him a shout right now wait a minute wait a minute some of y'all just some of y'all turned it but you didn't throw it some of y'all turned it, but you didn't throw it because you don't see the vision. So when I count to three and I start spinning, what you don't know is the reason why I saw a tornado back there. Because the Lord said instantly, now, now wait a minute, I'm going to count to three. And Chris, I want you to get all my stuff off the table. Put the cameras on the table now. Put the cameras on the table. Where's the video shot of the table? There it is. All right. One, two, three. You got 60 seconds. You got 60 seconds to clear everything off the table. 60 seconds. Now watch this. Now watch this. Do you see the table is clean? How many people see the table is clean? Now the reason why the table is clean is because the only way that she can take everything off the table in less than 60 seconds, it had to already be on the table. And what God is saying, that when I say give me a shout, because I'm doing it in instantly, that means everything you came in here after, it's already on the table. All you gotta do is come on and give God a praise and step over into the power of now! Instantly. Instantly. Raise your, raise your hand if your spirit really just got the fact that when he hung on the cross, and said it's finished. He ain't working on nothing. He ain't, he ain't working on nothing. He, he ain't trying to get your family healed. Uh -huh. He ain't trying to get them delivered. Uh, he not trying to, he not trying to prosper your ministry. It already is. Uh, I'm not giving nobody talk back to me. He said the problem is you. Uh, the problem is it's time for you to step over into what I've already done. He said and the conflict is you still praying about something that I've already completed. Uh, and that's why there's a conflict in the spirit. I just need somebody in here to get into the oneness with me, said God, and just begin to pray me knowing uh, that I done already worked it out. Uh, I'm ready for you to step over into what I said. Uh, who am I preaching to? I said, who am I talking to? Yeah. Now watch this. I'm finna say something. I'm finna, I'm, I'm finna put everybody, I'm, I'm finna put everybody on an even kilter. How many people in here got cell phones? 
Take your cell phone out if you got a cell phone. If you got a cell phone, take it out. Take it out. Take your cell phone out. Take your cell phone out. Take your cell phone out. Because I see some of y'all. Now don't get me wrong. Some of y'all still, still giving God your uh, church praise. Some of y'all still giving God your I don't want to mess my hair up praise. Oh God, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody to talk back to me. Some of y'all, some of y'all still giving God your, well, I don't come from a church like that. And I just really don't think that you gotta shout like that. It don't take all of that. I just don't think that's necessary. Cause I could praise God and God ain't deaf, but he ain't nervous either. And he don't shake when you shout. And one thing I know, it depends upon what you're trying to get done. Now, if you just want to worship God, that's one thing. But if you got a wall that's in your mind and in your family that you're trying to get torn down, the only way a wall come down is you got to shout. I'm not giving nobody to talk back to me. He's not talking about the way you praise God. He's not talking about the way you worship. He's talking about shouting. Because when you shout, he said it ushers you into another the dimension it scatters up the power of the enemy who am I talking to right now you got your cell phone if you got your cell phone hold it up hold up your cell phone hold up your cell phone hold up your cell phone now let me tell you something about your cell phone back in the old days and I'm, I'm done back in the old days back in the old days they used to take your picture and they would have to develop the picture in what they call a dark room. And, and they would, you would take your picture to Walgreens and they would tell you on Monday, come back by Friday and we'll have your pictures ready for you. So they had to take them in a dark room and develop the pictures. My God from Zion. And you had to wait a whole week before you could see the image. Then they moved up a little bit to what they call Polaroids. And so then they take a Polaroid picture and you can pull it out, but you had to fan it and then you had to rub it and then you had to pull it off slow because if you didn't pull it off slow, you would mess the picture up. But see, you can always tell what God is doing in the spirit by what is happening in the natural. Now you got cell phones where you can take a picture and instantly you get your picture I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me so everybody in here I want you to turn your camera around and I want you to take a picture of yourself when I when I count to three I want you to take it ain't got to be no good picture I just want you to snap yourself up are you ready come on one two three snap a picture of yourself uh -huh. snap it now uh -huh. because the word instant means how many people done snap the picture, raise it up? Because the word instant means a flash. If you done snapped it, raise it up, I want to see it. I want to see. Now, you know why some people still ain't got their camera up? Because you don't know how to work your camera. Do you know why some people still ain't got their camera up? Because they don't know how to work their camera. And that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. We don't know how to work the word. I'm not giving y'all talk back. You can have whatsoever you say. If you learn how to work the word, somebody give God a shout. I said, give him a shout. Praise. Wait a minute. I want, I, I want to give you this. Now the flash praise is in the camera. Now you done took the picture. How many people took their picture? Come on musicians, all of y'all. All of y'all. Because I feel something in this building right now. I feel something in this building. How many of y'all done took the picture? Raise it up. You done took the picture. Well let me make this announcement. What's in that picture? It can't change. At the time you took that picture, 
you were standing in the presence of God. At the time you took that picture, you was under the prophetic anointing of God. At the time you took that picture, the word of God was being prophesied. And now it's stuck in your phone. And it ain't nothing the devil can do about it. And you're the only person that can delete it. I'm not giving nobody to talk back to me. And that's why I'm right now. I feel a crazy praise in this place. Because what I came to tell you is that God, he done did it in an instant. And ain't nothing the devil can do about it. And I need some people to give God the kind of praise that says God. Wait, wait, and I'm finished. Somebody's saying, I don't have, I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can believe him because you don't know where I've been and you don't know what I'm facing. Okay, okay. So this is when the room divides itself. All right, all right. Why would God have a prophet who travels all over the world? What is God's purpose for visiting America? As selfish and arrogant and unbroken as we are. Why would God waste this major prophet's minor ye last years to come and fool with people? That's part of it is faith and the other part is intellect. If my intelligence if my intelligence don't tell me that it's correct, then I can't find myself to believe that. What would make God, what would make God take a prophet? What would God, why would God? Take a prophet of myself. Send me around the world. And then walk me through one of the most devastating times of my life. What would make God? <laughs> what would make him cause me to lose everything that I had? Seven houses, cars, mother have a stroke and can't even speak correctly get a divorce on a Friday and Monday morning, my daddy dropped dead in the kitchen. What would make God, wasn't sick? What would make God do all of that? What kind of God is that? I, I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I, that's all right, y'all ain't got to tell y'all as I'll tell man. What would make God do that? And, 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 and as I began to go to the lowest of low and the lowest of low and the lowest of low, I said, God, what are you trying to do? He said, I'm trying to find somebody relevant. I'm trying to find somebody that ain't got it all together because the world has show up. And I need somebody to be able to look in the face of somebody that's going through something that they've never been before and never thinking they're going to make it to tell them that God is still on the throne and he is still God. And in the midst of it all, I will not deny my savior. Who am I preaching to right now? So, 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 here we go. So what would make him get us all the way down? What would make him get me all the way down to the point where, where, where I'd lost my faith? You don't find people saying, I'd lost my faith. I remember sitting in a hotel with all the pills on the bed, wrote my parents a note, took all the pills, and was angry when I woke up the next morning. And God said, the power that I have over your life, you can't die because I need you. I said, what do you mean you need me? You've taken everything I've got. You've even taken my mind. 
talking about? I didn't even lost my faith. I said, why do you still have me here? And I don't even have my faith in you. And I'm preaching like this because I'm sick and tired of seeing Christians sit in the chairs waving their fake hands up like they believe God when some of them have lost their faith and don't even know how they're going to get out of it. They're trying to hold on the best they know how, but they're too embarrassed. They say, I done lost my hope. They're too embarrassed to say, when I trusted God, I felt like he let me down. They're too embarrassed to say, when I thought God was going to come through for me, he didn't. They're too embarrassed to say, somebody in here don't know how I'm living. Oh, y'all, I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me in this building. I wish I had some real people, some real, some real people that came to, 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 to be shifted into a real place. I said, well, what is the purpose of me being faithless? Dr. Sorello, and he gave me the greatest gift that I've ever received in the history of my Christian experience. I'm celebrating 25 plus years. He gave me the greatest gift that I had ever received from him. And I said, God, he said, you're running into the time and the season of the kingdom where the people have lost their faith. They scared to praise me. They scared to move in me. They scared to build on what I say. They scared to step over into it. They riding by property that I done told them is already theirs. They say, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. They doing nothing about vision that I've given them because you're looking at the people that have the form of godliness but they lost their faith, 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 lost. They can't even show to God. They done lost their faith. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm Wait a minute, they wake up in fear and go to bed in fear. And then they come to church and put on a fake praise and think that when I get through praising God, it's all going away. I'm not hearing y'all. Somebody better say you preaching the truth right now. So then I said, well, what is it? He said, I'm getting ready to give you the greatest gift you ever had. I said, okay, what is that? He said, you're going to find a remnant of people when you go to preach in this next dimension. He said, the first 25 years of your preaching, you was the people's prophet. The last days of your life, you will be my prophet. And that's why I preach like this. I don't care if it's 50 people. I don't care if it's five people. Because I know a God. I met another God. I met another God outside of the politics of church. I met another God outside of religion. I met another God outside of sitting on the pulpit. I met another God outside of wearing a title. I met the God that says he loves me no matter what. I met the God that says I will supply all of your needs. I mean your needs for real. Not somebody keeping you manipulated and controlled because they call themselves blessing you I am your God and your source That's why I can shout and I don't need no music. That's why I can dance and I don't need drums. That's why I praise him like this in my kitchen. That's why I praise him like this in my car. That's why I pull my car over and I give him a real praise because I rest the real Lord. I met the real savior. I met the real deliverer. Somebody give God a shout. He said, I gave you in the midst of this trial, I gave you another gift. He said, but the thing I want to do, I want to revisit the first gift. He said, Lo, I'm going to send the power of the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. And after the power of the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, you shall speak with new tongues. I had an experience in my prayer room and I started speaking. Oh, I even lost my prayer room. <laughs> I even lost my prayer room. I even lost the room that I had for years that I would go and meet God 
and it was like God was going tis 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 cause what I'm trying to show you uh, is you got to learn how to meet me in your car uh, you got to learn how to meet me in the basement uh, you got to learn how to meet me in the park uh, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me uh, I wish I had uh, he said heaven and earth shall pass away but my word uh, shall forever stand you got to learn how to tap my word uh, when you walking down the street uh, I'm not hearing nobody and if y'all depending upon your neighbor as to the reason why you bless God in here you in for a rude awakening because I'm here to tell you there's another uprising that's coming up and it's coming from the people that's about to get saved that don't know nothing about religion all they know is that when I was lost he found me when I was blind he opened up my blinded eyes somebody give God a shout about the gift and I'm finished he said the gift of new tongues which means when you open up your mouth you're gonna say new stuff it don't just mean shalabakasata it means <laughs> after I get baptized <laughs> I'm going to say to myself, I'm going to say to my own soul, take courage. I'm going to look at my own self and prophesy. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm going to look at my own self and say, that should not die but live. Okay, I was waiting on a prophet that couldn't find me, but couldn't nobody find me. So I had to prophesy to myself. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. And that's when I found the new gift. And this is the new gift. The new gift was... He said, I'm going to put you in auditoriums. I'm going to put you in places for the second time around. And this time, I'm going to give you the gift I need in your life. And it's called, I'm going to see if y'all can figure it out. It's called, when the, I'm going to paraphrase it. It's called, when the prophet Dr. Morris Sorello got to the valley of dry bones and began to prophesy, everybody was dead. They didn't have no brains, but what they did was they responded to the voice of the prophet. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. When the prophet Jesus went to Lazarus' tomb, Lazarus was dead. But when he called his name, Lazarus didn't have faith. What he had was the power to respond. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And in this building, let me tell you what's dropping in here. It's the power to respond to God, not the power to have faith. Because some stuff you ain't gonna have faith for her. but the minute you hear God speaking your job is to respond by telling God thank you by praising God who am I talking to right now I wish I had somebody that would just respond Wait. tell your neighbor tell your neighbor Lady over there in the white, it's a lady right there in the white sweater with pink sleeves, yes you. Baby, run down here. Run down here in the front right quick because I just saw something on you. I saw you, I saw you responding. I didn't see your faith. I see you saying, God ain't got nothing else but to respond. And, and see what y'all don't know is that life, sinews, skin, meat, brains, purpose is all returned in an instant when you respond. So whatever you think you done lost, all you got is 60 seconds over the next 30 seconds. To, I'm not talking about giving God a church praise. I need somebody to get out of your row because some of y'all look like y'all bound up. I need somebody to get out of your row and tell your neighbor, excuse me, I got to respond. My faith is weak, but I got to respond. When I count to three, a praise is going up in this place and God said you will never be the same God said he's going to give you power God said he's going to increase your faith God said he's going to cause you to speak those things which be not as though they were are you ready I said are you ready now let me help you with something let me help you with something. When I say, when I say, are you ready? I'm not talking about looking at me. 
I'm not talking about looking at me. I'm talking about shutting your eyes. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about looking up here like, oh prophetess, what you gonna do? I'm talking about shutting your eyes and giving the hey, shut your head so by behind ya. Yes, woman of God, I see it already. Huh? I'm talking about shutting your eyes and giving God the kind of praise where you gotta act like ain't nobody in this place but you. You gotta act like you the only person on this altar because if I be a woman of God, if I be a prophet of God and I know that I am, when you leave this altar, <laughs> you leave in this altar with a new dimension of the will of God in your life and no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. I'm giving you power, power to respond. I'm giving you power, power to make it. I'm giving you power, power to go through. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout! for now not just for now but the hell shut ya hey bye hope I saw ya woman of God the next time show enough praise him show enough praise him show enough, hey 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 he's trying to do it for you some of y'all standing next to your friends you better lose yourself some of y'all standing next to your husband and your wife you better forget about everybody because you ain't got but a moment you ain't got but 60 seconds you ain't got but the spirit of now i'm breaking every pressure i'm breaking the spirit of doubt i'm breaking the spirit of unbelief i'm giving you back your faith i'm giving you back your faith i'm giving it back this he gave me a scripture and I'm closing with this this is how far over into this thing I am he gave me the scripture in Luke 5 26 and the scripture said who they I said believe me I said believe me his I said I didn't change my mind, sir. Hey, shut up. Shut your ears. Help! I just gave you back your faith. Who by my son? I'm so into this. He gave me Luke 5, 26. And everybody gonna repeat this after me. Cause we got tonight, we got tomorrow, we got Friday, we got Saturday, we got a lot of long way to go. So you gotta repeat this after me because he told me to deliver this in the atmosphere. The scripture says, and we praise the Lord because the Lord has done, H-A-S, not going to, has. The Lord has done wonderful, incredible, unthinkable. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Strange things today. Okay, now, now we ain't got to tomorrow. We ain't got to tonight. 
we haven't got to Friday but the Lord said the problem is uh, that the reason why this is going to be one of the greatest conferences uh, that he's ever had in America because we're going to throw into tomorrow uh, what we expect to happen uh, he said and the scripture is uh, that we will repeat it uh, for the Lord has done uh, wonderful uh, incredible uh, unthinkable uh, strange things today uh, now when you say what's this when you get to the word today 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 I want you to praise him I want you to grab a hold to your stomach because what the Lord is going to do is everything that's coming across this pulpit for the rest of the week that you're going to give birth to the Lord said this time you ain't going to miscarry this time you ain't going to get home and lose it as a matter of fact I'm changing your house while you're here as a matter of fact I'm transforming the atmosphere while you're here come on repeat after me for the Lord has done wonderful incredible Strange things today. Now give him a prize. Give him a prize. Give him a prize. For the Lord has already come. 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 As you go back to your seats, I need you to touch, I need you to touch seven people. And we're going to quote the scripture in Hebrews. And this is the only part we're going to quote. For the Lord has set a new day today. For the Lord has set again. That's what the scripture said. For the Lord has set again a new day today. I tell seven people. For the Lord has set a new day, a new day, again today. Somebody say, for the Lord has set a new day. Some of y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. Because when the word new come out of your mouth, you should think about yourself from the top of your head, down to the sole of your feet. For the Lord has set a new day today. For the Lord has set a new day today. For the Lord has set a new day. He set a new day again. He's done it again. Can I get somebody back there to praise him for again? Praise him for the word again. Praise him for the word again. Because he didn't have to do it again. He didn't have to speak it again. He didn't have to work it out again. He didn't have to give us another chance again. He didn't have to know it again. He didn't have to call us again. He didn't have to use us again. Somebody say again. Somebody say again, 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 again. He said a new day. He said a new day. A new day. A new day again. Again, again. Another turn. Another turn. Somebody respond. When I say the Lord has done wonderful things, I need somebody to just start shouting like you're crazy. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Some of y'all, some of y'all is too stuck up for me. Some of y'all act too stuck up. When I said praise him like you crazy, I mean praise him in a way that if your family was here, they would be looking at you like, what's wrong with you? I, oh, y'all, come on. God said respond for the last time. For the Lord has done a wonderful thing. Incredible thing. Unthinkable things. Strange things. Now give him a shot to die. To die.
Miss Cirillo. Hey, listen to this. I gotta go. But when God began to tell me that he wanted me to move into the realm because I had lost my faith. And he said to me, I don't need your faith this next go round. I need your response. I'm not getting nobody to say nothing. Tell your neighbor, say, if your faith is weak, just respond when you hear the Lord. Uh-huh. Because what you ain't lost is your ability to hear the Lord. Your faith may be weak, but you ain't lost your ability to hear the Lord. And that's why I say, when you hear me, I see cabos. Harden not your heart. I just need a response. He began to deal with me. Watch this. I gotta come then this out. Can y'all y'all make your way back to your seats for a second? Let me just let me just do this. Let me just do this. Nobody walking. I need you to hear this. Lord Jesus. Ooh, woman. My God. My God. My God. Response. There it is. There it is. There it is. The Lord just healed you. The Lord just healed you. How am I see you? Who be I see you? I gotta do this. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta do this. I gotta walk down this aisle and I need y'all to hear this. So I don't need nobody to grab me right quick because I gotta do this. I gotta do this. When the Lord said, Hasha, When the Lord said that He wanted us to rest. Hold up, when he said respond when he said respond y'all back up for me y'all back up for me he said in this place I brought people in this building this year y'all give me room I brought people in this building this year that I didn't ask you about your faith. I said, respond. I said, respond. I said, respond. And the reason why the Lord said, the reason why the Lord said in an instant, in an instant, because all you got is 60 seconds. And he told me everywhere I go, Mother Nichols. He said, because you're in another dimension now. Don't waste time with church people. How many people just heard what I said? He said, because you're in another dimension, don't waste time with church people. He said, because spiritual people know my voice and a stranger they wouldn't follow. And he said, the level of confidence and faith that I have given you is beyond what you've been raised to believe. It is beyond what you've been trained up to believe. That got canceled in the trial. That got burned up in the trial. The knowledge that you are walking in now and the confidence in me that you have, it's been birthed out through the fire. It's been birthed out through the real fire, not the fire that we talking about and somebody was talking about me and they hurt my feet. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the real fire. I'm talking about the Job kind of fire. So when the Lord spoke that to me, he said, don't waste your time. He said, don't waste your time. He said, because what I want you to understand, I don't preach. Listen to this. I don't preach as much as I used to. And not because I don't have a fax machine that's bringing in invitations like this. But the Holy Ghost told me don't waste oil. The Holy Ghost told me you're not an itinerary speaker. You're a prophet. And you cannot waste oil. 
going to places and preaching and people don't understand that what I've sent you to do is a transformation in their mindset because of the things that I will call them to do they're going to have to be able to carry the spirit of instantly because it's going to be a split second that I'm going to open up a door and open up a portal and you got to understand that when God opens it I don't care if you back in Texas when you feel it you got to move in it right then and where you gonna get that anointing from you're gonna walk away from this conference with it this year Fofi, wherever you just went, I just felt that. God get me to do something mighty with you, Fofi. Wherever you just went to, God get me to do something mighty with you. The Holy Ghost said, he just returned you back to the 70s. He just returned you back to your original faith. Hey, woman of faith and power, you will pull in millions. Hasalabasa. You got a millionaire spirit, woman of God. Father, you got a millionaire spirit. Don't get entangled with hundred dollar people. When you got a millionaire spirit, if you gotta walk by yourself, stay in the millions in your mindset. <laughs> Because it's coming to you in 2011. Fofi is coming to you. Doors is coming to you. Grants is coming to you. When I just did that, I just saw angels ascending and descending. That's what that was. I saw angels. Sister Fafi ascending and descending. They were coming to give you plans and going back up and rushing to the... Now let me tell you how not wise y'all are. When I did that, all y'all should be praising God. You know why? Because God ain't partial. And if you in the building, he said to the man of God, if the disciples, if y'all are there when I go up, <laughs> Y'all gonna get a double blood. So every time I say they're descending us and you better stop praising God because that's what he's doing for all of us in here. And he said, I'm gonna say it again, the angels just march for us. Y'all still praising God like I just said. I said the angels are, they just march for us. told me to say it one time. Sister Nichols, man of God, woman of God, when God started doing this in me, I started walking in a realm in God, Robin and Christian that I have never seen in my life. I started walking in a realm with God that it wasn't putting on the anointing. It's 24-7, riding down the street in the car. I said, God says so-and-so, so-and-so, do so-and-so, so-and-so, do so-and-so. It's like, and my Lord showed me the scripture where he said, I've given you an open heaven. I've opened up heaven over your head. When I saw your face on the flyer, the Lord said, and yea, I bring you back into the presence of this man because I call you Juanita Bonham the second and it was his prophecy that launched you to the nations and yet I bring you back across his path again to reinstate what I said and when I walked up on this platform the reason why I got so discombobulated because when Dr. Sorello hugged me 
he backed off from me and he said, woman of God, the Lord said that this is a time that the Lord is going to prove to you that it was him that called you. And he said, and your anointing and your ministry is about to be greater than it's ever been. He said, this is prophecy being revealed. And he said, and I want you to understand that today the Lord reinstates you. Oh, no, 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 no. You better give God a shout. You better, no, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. Because I don't know about you, but that was an Elijah, Elijah moment for me. Somebody just better give God a shout. Imagine that all of the anointing has passed down. You better give him a shout because just as the prophet says, every instated so are you you better give God a shout I don't have time I don't have time God spoke to me 77 people in this building that God said you moving him instantly and everywhere I go the few places that he allowed me to go, even in our ministry at home, I tell the people, you got 60 seconds. I said, because I'm not to be played with in this hour. Because I don't care. Because of what the Lord has done for me. Because of what he has restored. It's going to blow y'all away when y'all hear what the Lord has done. Mm -mm, this ain't my source. Ha, she al he said, now I'm sending you to preach. Now I'm sending you to preach because I have need of a prophet. I'm sending you to preach to tap some people into the instantly. Who am I talking to? Raise your hand. And he said to me, Mr. Hafush, he said, 77 people in this building. He said, because in this meeting, I don't know how many more times you're going to take the microphone. But God said, remind the people of the spirit of instantly. And the book of Ezekiel backs up what I'm saying. When the book of Ezekiel said, no more will we be involved with the prophecies. What they prophesied that say things will come to pass and they never do. He said, for behold, the Lord said, there shall be no more delays. I'm not hearing y'all. Uh, touch somebody and say, no more delays. Uh, touch somebody and say, no more delays. No more delays. No more delays. Ain't nothing else held up. Tell them you are in a room that declares ain't nothing else held up. Y'all didn't get that. I said, touch your neighbor and say, you standing on the ground of a room that ain't nothing else held up. You standing under the power of instantly. You better give God a praise. That would sow God a thousand dollar seed off and run now. Run now from all over this building. Run now. He said, run now. 77 people in this building move now. I said, run. I didn't say walk. I didn't say walk. I didn't say walk because he said 60 seconds. I think y'all think I'm playing. I'm not playing. Just take one. Hurry up. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I'm not just agreeing 60 seconds because it sounds good. Everybody go get one. Instantly, 
something in the super and I mean hurry up and run back up here and throw it back up here on this altar and if you in this building you said Dr. Barnum I don't have a thousand dollars I give a Holy Ghost saying a 107 seed come now hurry up run up to me right now a 107 seed a hundred and seven dollars hurry up hurry up because God doesn't permit me to toil in offerings anymore he doesn't permit me to do it anymore he doesn't permit me to do it he said it offends him now look, give me some more envelopes. He said it offends him. $107 is nothing. And I'm telling you, before you even leave this conference, you're going to see the benefit from what you did. You're going to see the benefit. I got a point for you. Come here. Come here. Come on that thousand dollar seed hurry up because it's got to go up on this platform before I walk off the platform and I'm getting ready to walk off you in this building you said Dr. Bottom I don't have 107 you better get the biggest seed you can find I don't care if it's 20 dollars I don't care if it's 19 dollars and run up here because what you don't understand is that when the spirit up instantly hit a building God ain't playing we'll show ya we'll show ya don't walk up on me get back off me get back off me I'm gonna be anointed please thank you Jesus Bring me the envelopes. Bring me the envelopes. Hurry up. Hurry up and run back up here and put your seat on the altar. Thank like you. Take one and pass it back. Hurry up. Hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Hurry up. Hurry up. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Hurry up right now. Every person that took that envelope to sow that thousand dollar seed, come quick. I'm telling you, come quick. I feel the anointing because when it lifts, I'm walking off the stage. When it lifts, I'm walking off the stage. I can't stay on the stage when it lifts because it ain't about money for me. It's about the spirit of his presence. It's about the spirit of his presence.